If we know the determinant of a matrix, and then a single elementary row operation is performed on that matrix, it would seem a little dramatic if we had to recalculate the determinant all over again because of that single row operation. Thankfully, elementary row operations have fairly straightforward effects on the determinant of a matrix. Today, we'll look at how an elementary row operation affects the determinant of a matrix and see how we can use that to find determinants using row reduction. Let's begin by looking at the effects of elementary row operations. In each of these cases, the matrix B is obtained from A by performing an elementary row operation on A. Let A be an n by n matrix. First, if B is obtained from A by multiplying a row or column by a scalar K, then the determinant of B is just the determinant of A but multiplied by that scalar K. Here's an example of what that could look like. On the left is matrix B. It's matrix A but with the first row multiplied by a scalar K. The determinant of this is just K times the determinant of the matrix without that factor of k inside. So a factor in a row or in a column can be taken out of the determinant. The determinant of b with that factor of k in the first row is just equal to k times the determinant of a, which doesn't have that scalar k in the first row. This also means if we were to multiply two rows, for example, by the scalar k, then the effect would be to multiply the determinant of a by two factors of k. So k squared. Next, if b is obtained from a by swapping two rows or columns, then the determinant of b is just the negative of the determinant of a. And here in red is an example of what that could look like. So on the left, we've got matrix a but with rows 1 and rows 2 swapped. This determinant is just the negative of the determinant of the original matrix that didn't have that row swap. And if you think about the cofactor expansion to find the determinant, then this should make sense. Imagine we were doing a cofactor expansion along the first row in the matrix A. Each cofactor has a negative one to the i plus j, negative one to the row number plus the column number. And so that would just be a positive one in this first case, and then a negative one, and then a positive, because i plus j is even, i plus j is odd, i plus j is even. But then if we do a row swap, moving this row down to row two, then if we did a cofactor expansion along this row, we would have a negative one and a positive one and a negative one. So now the row position of this entry is actually two and the column position is one. So two plus one is three, that's odd, which is why the cofactor expansion would throw in a negative there. So you can see that these signs are just the opposite of the signs before the swap. That's why swapping rows or columns just has the effect of negating the determinant. Lastly, perhaps the nicest rule of all, if B is obtained from A by adding a multiple of one row or column to another, then the determinant of B is actually unchanged from A. The determinant of B equals the determinant of A if a multiple of one row or column is added to another. This rule will be easier to justify once we've proven a few more properties of determinants, so we will postpone explanation for now, but this is what it could look like. In this example, k times row 2, you can see that's row 2, k times row 2 has been added to row 1. The determinant of this new matrix obtained by adding a multiple of one row to another is not any different. It equals the determinant of A. Adding a multiple of one row or column to another doesn't change the determinant. So here's one more look at all of those properties. Now we're going to take a look at some elementary matrices and by considering what one row operation must have been performed on the identity matrix to obtain the elementary matrix we're looking at, we'll quickly be able to calculate the determinant. Recall that the determinant of the identity matrix is one. So looking at some elementary matrices, here is a four by four matrix determinant. What's the determinant of this matrix? Well, it's just the identity after having its third row multiplied by a factor of four. We can pull that factor of four out of the determinant. So this would just be four times the determinant of the four by four identity matrix. The determinant of that is just one, so the determinant of our matrix is four times one, 
which is just four. That was easy. What about this four by four matrix here? In this matrix, it looks like the identity except rows two and four have been swapped. Swapping those two rows has the effect of negating the determinant of the identity matrix. The determinant of the identity matrix is one, so the determinant of this matrix after the row swap is negative one. Now what about this matrix here? This matrix was obtained from the identity by adding five copies of row four to row one. Hence, the determinant is not changed at all. And so the determinant of this matrix is just the determinant of the identity, which is one. In this example, it's actually pretty easy to see why this is the case, that the determinant doesn't change, because we can still perform a cofactor expansion along the first column. If we do that, then only the first term is going to be non-zero, and the first term of that cofactor expansion will be one multiplied by the determinant of the submatrix that remains when that first row and column are deleted, and obviously this submatrix has not been changed at all by the row operation we performed, so the determinant has not been changed either. Another interesting consequence of the fact that adding a multiple of a row or column to another doesn't change the determinant is that if a square matrix has two proportional rows or columns, it must have a determinant of zero. This is because, for example, if we consider the determinant of this three by three matrix, we can see that column three is proportional to column two. Column three is just one and a half times column two. Hence, if we subtract one and a half copies of column two from column three, that won't change the determinant, but it will introduce a column of zeros. This obviously has a determinant of zero because we could perform a cofactor expansion along that column of zeros, which would clearly just equal zero. So if a square matrix has two proportional rows or columns, then a row or column of zeros can be introduced by an elementary row operation that doesn't change the determinant. And the determinant of a matrix with a zero column or zero row is certainly zero, which is found by performing cofactor expansion along that row or column of zeros. This all leads to what can be a pretty efficient procedure for finding the determinant of a matrix using row reduction. We'll dig more into this next time, but let's see an example before we go. To find the determinant of a square matrix, we can reduce it to triangular form using elementary row operations, whether upper triangular or lower triangular. Then we find the determinant of the triangular matrix, which is very easy, it's just the product along the diagonals. And then we just relate that determinant to that of the original matrix, because we know how the elementary row operations we performed must have affected the determinant. For example, to find the determinant of this three by three matrix, let's start by adding suitable multiples of row one to row two and row three so that we have zeros below this leading one. So we'll add two times row one to row two and negative five times row one to row three. That gets us here. And note that these are determinant equations, right? So this is a determinant. We just performed a row operation of adding multiples of one row to two others, and that does not change the determinant. So this is equal to this after introducing those zeros. Now let's do a similar thing, adding a multiple of row two to row three to turn this 13 into a zero. So we just multiply row two by 13 halves and add that to row three, which cancels out the 13. And 13 halves plus two is 13 halves plus four halves, so 17 halves. And again, adding the multiples of one row to another does not change the determinant. This equals this equals this. All right, but now this is an upper triangular matrix, and to find the determinant of such a thing, we just multiply along the main diagonal. So the determinant of this, and thus the determinant of our original matrix, is one multiplied by negative two, multiplied by 17 over two. Thus, by reducing this matrix to triangular form, we calculate its determinant to be negative 17. Again, the idea is to perform elementary row operations on the matrix to get it to a matrix whose determinant is easy to evaluate. But while we performed those elementary row operations, we kept track of how that must affect the determinant. We'll see more examples next time.
Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, and be sure to check out my Linear Algebra course and Linear Algebra Exercises playlist in the description for more. If you want to help support what I do, please consider joining Wrath of Math as a channel member. You can get early and exclusive access to select videos, as well as access to the lecture notes used in my lessons. Thanks for watching. Uh, uh, I'm the mathematical menace, the machinations of mankind, two calculators at the same time, hand signs and abacus, finger count and calculus. I'm the V to the T, my parameter, the rapidest. Happens like this, my lectures, the most prominent, dominant. Call me the Morgan, I get the compliments. The union in together like any time that we intersect, cause my opponents know they need.